Alright, let's see if it works. It did. I didn't think it was going to work at first, but it did. Holy cow. This is going to be interesting because I don't even know if uh, I can get out. So, uh, I've never been here before. So, wish me luck. We're doing it together. I don't know if you've been here. Uh, what's in your auto? Naga? Right inside of a boss? Tell me this is a boss. Hello, Mr. Naga. Where are you at? The whole light thing is trippy. Oh, maybe I'll turn it off. I'm not too sure. I don't see anything. What the heck is that thing? Sure, I should probably kill it. Yeah. You hear Naga? I don't see anything. Or does it not come out until you, uh... Till you go down there. I don't know how it works. Oh, wait. There it is. What the heck? He breaks black. Hi, buddy. That's stupid on my portals right there. I can't do damage to him, and he can't do damage to me. Unless we're in the courtyard. Looks like, anyway. Hmm. Alright, only one way to find out. Where are you going? He doesn't like fire, I'll tell you that. Okay. Some random geodes just chilling. Nope, normal. Vanilla geodes. Boosh glow. Definitely some enemies up in this piece. Oh, I should have. Oh, that's a 
firefly. And it gives off light. Would you look at that? Oh, oh, the lag. Don't want the lag. I mean, honestly, I don't even know what I'm after here. I'm just here, you know? This is a very good looking block. Oh, what's that? Skeleton Druid? Okay, that's a spawner. Skeleton spawner. Is that all that's in here? Looks like it. That's kind of cool. Wait, did you just spawn another one? You did. Oh, you don't even have... I don't even have, uh, what you call it? Are they gonna spawn even with light? I don't know. I probably, that was risky of me. Should have checked for traps, you know? Hello. Hey. Oh, you spit on me. Poison, got it. Yeah, they're gonna spawn regardless. Got it. Okay. And what about in here? Is that where you are too? Of course you are. Hmm. I'd be lying if I would say I'm not curious. What's that? What the heck is that? Is that just a pig? A wild boar? Something's wrong with the rendering of these things. What the hell is that? What is that? <laughs> oh, I can't help but laugh, you know? He said, oh. What's happening right now? Red cap goblin. Is this something or is this nothing? What the heck is that? Boots are mine. I don't know what that means, but okay. Apparently, the boots are mine. Oh, well, hi, Bat. After traveling the area for a little while, we stumble upon another courtyard with another Naga. Uh, and the first time was very intimidating. I didn't know what we were getting into. Haven't seen too many mobs that break blocks, so it was very scary. I didn't know if they hit hard. So after defeating the first one, we realized that this boss isn't that bad. Um, when searching around the area, though, there wasn't a whole lot around. You know, that was too crazy or that exciting uh, other than the new looking creatures that are underground the weird looking mobs that were around and i think that was just the game rendering them wrong uh but we do stumble upon this little troll area and uh, with these cave trolls we start to get closer to them and i want to go down there but again don't know anything about this dimension so I didn't want to dive in too quickly. Uh, after Lorem towards us, though, we slowly realize that we we can't hit these guys. All it really does is 
give us this green particle effect and we really can't damage or destroy any of them with any means including bows and arrows which is something I don't really understand what's going on uh, not only that we can't even break blocks to make our way down in there so hmm if you have any ideas let me know down in the comments below that can help me out on why this is happening is it just my game doing it is there certain things that you must do inside this dimension before you can do other things I'm not I'm not really too sure because we also stumble upon some rain in which I was gonna climb this mountain but when doing so we got burnt so it must have been acid rain so for now we're gonna leave this dimension and start to explore a little bit more of the overworld so we can get your help in the comments below about what the heck's going on in the Twilight Forest. After searching a little bit, we do stumble upon a sea serpent that also wants to get towards land and kill us. Man, these guys are relentless. Uh, they can sense us from a mile away and they just want to kill us all the time. Uh, they, We've seen them go on the land and and chase us down in the beginning episodes but now that we're more equipped and we got this awesome bow here they don't really stand too much of a chance as long as we can stay further away one of the things we'd like to do in this series is make ourselves a full set of sea serpent armor it'll just help us in the water because there's so many dangerous things in the water um, we keep moving on though and see an alley which is now in the normal minecraft game uh, but this one is not like normal. I try to give it an item, but it wants nothing to do with it uh, Later on we stumble upon the tower and we've seen these before in Previous playthroughs and I know that there's a waste point at the top of it Waste stones are very useful for getting to places much faster and inside of better minecraft plus you are able to take them and replace them wherever you choose so naturally, we'll be taking this one back home. As we collect our waystone and our new mending book, the closest area nearby I see is an ice biome, which is very cool looking with the swirls in the map and everything, so we decide to check it out. But as we start to head towards, the ice starts to crackle, and we see some creatures underneath us that want to eat us. Man, the water in this game is so relentless. That every time we go near it, there's something that wants to eat us. Uh, at the time, I didn't know, but these are known as angler fishes. Because we do end up getting some drops from them after taking them out from afar. Uh, some angler fangs uh, and some essence. Um, but again, I don't know what they do, whether they drag us under or do anything like that. But these things are ugly. So staying away from them is the best option for us. We'll just uh, keep shooting them from afar and killing them that way. I think that bird stole something from us. Alright, we reach the top of a mountain and we hear this creature at the top. Uh, not really too sure what it is, but seems how it doesn't seem to want to attack us. 
I don't really want to poke the bear per se. Uh, it does look like a dragon almost, but not quite. So, and there's two of them. Maybe if there was one, I would have got a little closer, um, but really didn't want to mess with it. So, on the way home, it's starting to get dark. Now, I did get nervous at first because I thought it was a blood moon, and it turns out it was a harvest moon. Uh, but being around, out at nighttime, especially near the water, was just not something that I wanted to deal with. So, we were getting close to home, using the speed from our bow to get back home when this happens. Yep. What the heck was that? That is ridiculous. So, that just happened. This guy came out of nowhere. Did you see that? I had to go back, get a replay, and take a look. He spawns right in front of us. The worst part about it is we lose our bow. That was the best bow that I had. Anyway, we make a new bow. Uh, not nearly as good. Doesn't have the speed attribute. Doesn't have infinity now, so we have to farm arrows. That's great. So I decide to go in a different direction and start go back to where this whole journey started in the first place. Uh, and little did we know, there's our old friend from episode one who tried to kill us. Uh, but we take him out and we get ourselves some more scales. Uh, check out the area which we wanted to with the villagers uh, from episode one. Uh, turns out these guys are fishermen. They do have some unique items inside of their inventory like amber crystals and things underneath that I don't really know exactly what they're used for. But we'll figure it out later on. I uh, wanted to check out the dark biome. Uh, saw these cute dogs. Uh, but... They don't like us. Uh, they're called Howls, and they attack on sight. They don't do a lot of damage, but they are extremely annoying. They're like, they're like pirate wolves. Uh, I accidentally hit this raccoon on the swing. Don't know how, because he was behind us. Didn't want to take him out, but he probably wasn't going to stop bothering us. So I had no choice. Don't judge me. I feel you judging me right now. You would have done the same thing. Anyways, we continue on and we go past this after collecting some of the logs and see a desert-like biome uh, with this ugly mosquito that I was almost for certain was going to attack us. Uh, it turns out he's not hostile. Kept getting closer and he just wouldn't attack us, so I ended up leaving him alone and letting him live. Uh, after exploring a little bit more, we do see our first dead dragon. Very nice. So, I start to approach it with caution, of course, because obviously something had to take this thing out, and I didn't want to get attacked by it, but we were in the clear. Turns out it was a stage 3 fire dragon, and we were able to collect the skull and bones from it, uh, and head on further. Uh, not too far from the desert, we do find an underground village. Yep, those exist in here. So, villages that exist underground usually has a spiral tunnel that you go through. We go around exploring the entire area, grab as many goodies as we possibly can, uh, and it is connected to a lot of different dungeons, and it's pretty much like a, a maze. Uh, lots of little obstacles to go through uh, and find. We spent a little bit of time down there. Uh, and eventually, we stumble upon a few areas that have some decent loot inside of them. Along with a treasure room.
Yep, and it was trapped. So all odds fails, you always want to check for traps. After leaving the village, we go across the jungle and explore that further to find a few cool looking creatures on the inside. Uh, all of them which are hostile, including this very cute dragon fruit, which I wanted to take home. Uh, we end up trying to journey along the sea, and we know how that usually goes. And as I'm journeying, I'm just wondering, what is taking damage? I don't have any visual cues. I don't know what the heck is going on. All I know is I'm about to freaking die. So I need to hurry up and board the shore and see what the heck is going on. And there it is. It's an electric dragon. Just, just killing us. It is a very good thing that we have that totem. Uh, and I didn't even see any indicators of us getting electrocuted at the time. But not only do we have to worry about sea creatures, we also have to worry about dragons in the sea. Jeez, man. So, thanks to the totem, we are able to live. I'm not too sure what happens to this dragon afterwards, but he doesn't take any arrow shots. And I'm trying to collect myself, and I'm trying to think, what do I do from here? If he doesn't take any arrows, might as well do the same tactic as we did with the Naga. Take some, a golden apple, get some absorption stats, uh, and get in closer for the kill. Because arrows just aren't doing the trick. As I approach the dragon, hoping he doesn't kill us, he kind of like puts us in his mouth or something. Because we were like mounted to him. It said hold shift to dismount. Uh, because of the absorption, it is hitting us. But it's not really doing a, total, a whole lot of damage. So I rejuvenate and... I really don't know what's going on here, but he seems to be stuck, so I'll take the free win. After making a few bottles to collect the dragon blood, we start to approach a dragon, get some of the dragon scales, uh, get the blood from the dragon. Each dragon allows you three bottles of their blood. Uh, and then we harvest the bones and the skulls again and start to head back home. On the way back home, though, we do get a couple of more friends. Uh, I see a couple of monkeys and I just see if I can tame them. I'm not too sure if I can, but it's worth a shot. And if you can tame a monkey, of course, they're going to want bananas. And I didn't know at the time and I thought the game was freaking out. But those banana peels that drop on the floor actually make you slip and slide all over the place. Kind of funny. But once you open the banana bunches, you get an actual banana. Then you can approach the monkey and feed him the banana. Uh, just like you can with bones and wolves. Eventually, you'll get the achievement and then you can make them stay or follow or wander. Um, it is very cool. Uh, they are shoulder pets as well. I don't know if they're going to attack anything, but if they do, that's awesome as well. But it's cool to have a new friend around. So, upon defeating the lightning dragon inside of the quest form, which I don't show you, it does give you a sapphire dragon egg, as you can see on the upper left-hand corner. So, naturally, I assumed that this dragon was a lightning dragon. Because you get it as a reward for killing a lightning dragon. So, I looked up on how to, you know, hatch a lightning dragon egg. And it says it needs to rain. So, I figured I would set it up outside and wait for it to rain. While it's doing that, I would check out the stats of the dragon armor... And start to make as much as I can. It is going to help us in future fights for the dragon. And we'll add it to our armor collection that continues to grow. However, 
I later realized that the sapphire egg is not a lightning. It is a ice dragon. So in order to hatch the ice dragon, of course, you have to surround it in water and ice in order for it to hatch. So we start to do that. I put as many ice blocks as I could possibly make around it. Set the dragon inside of the water. And within a couple of seconds, the egg gets submerged in ice. Now it is a frozen dragon egg. After some time, we got a new friend. And naturally, I want to keep our friend nice and protected, especially while it's young. And I start to craft it some armor. And in order to speed the process of the growth, you can make dragon meal. And as you feed the dragon meal to the dragon, it starts to grow up quicker than normal. We cannot ride or do anything with the dragon until it gets to stage three. So we will continue this process until we are able to ride our new friend. All right. Now that we got the dragon equipped with fully armor, I think the armor looks very, very cool on him. And we got a few more pets and animals and friends behind us to accompany us on this journey. But, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this episode. We have our waystone. We're starting to create and make more of the... Um, Dr dragon meal in order to keep the dragon fed this guy here is starting to get very big and constantly needs to eat even if it isn't uh, dragon meal he still gets hungry over time uh, so if I don't have the dragon meal I still got to feed him regular food uh, and it's going to be a constant battle so we're going to need to farm for that as you can see behind us we did make a little shelter for the dragon to stay in uh, we're going to continue to get him up to stage 3. And then once he gets to stage 3, we'll be able to fly him all around the overworld. And be able to travel more of this land quicker, faster, and honestly safer. Because now we can avoid the water. But that's going to do for this episode. I appreciate everybody for stopping by. We will see you in the next one. And goodbye.